Real Life Real Crime is a true crime podcast brought to you by Woody Overton and executive producer Toby Tomplay in conjunction with iHeartRadio and Cloud 10 Media. Yeah, the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. to an attorney prior to and during any question. You can't afford one to court appoint one for you. You understand your rights? Your crime spree was over, son. Yeah, you thought you had it licked. But Detective Overton made you sure to turn to shit. <laughs> This episode of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast may contain descriptions of acts of violence or that are of a sexual nature. It should be for people that are 18 years or older. Heed my warning, people. I do not get the facts of these cases off of the internet or from some television show. The facts I'm retelling you were presented to me by the victims of the crimes are the perpetrators who committed the crimes against the victims. My description of the crime scenes are what I saw with my own two eyes. If you're going to get offended, please turn this podcast off now. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. And as always, I'm your host, Woody Overton. And today, I'm doing a very, very special near and dear to my heart episode. Y'all know it's raw and unscripted. I will be playing some some audio clips. Stay tuned at the end of the show for a bunch of announcements, including about the third annual crew bash or Lopa raffle, et cetera. But I don't even know how to tell the story, but I'm going to call it Justice for Mary, the Arrest. Okay? So I want to digress and go back to the beginning of how I got involved in Mary's case, Mary Porsche's case. And it was really a long process. And I kept getting messages from different lifers about Mary's homicide or or murder case. And would I please contact the family and take this case on? And y'all, I wasn't going to do it. I know most people don't like the series. When I do the, the cases like Courtney Coco's or Miss Barbara Blunt's and and now Mary's, they you just want me to tell my old cop stories. And I get that, but, you know, I'm an old detective at heart. And now I'm a certified expert witness in all U.S. federal courts and law enforcement matters. So, you know, I'm a career lifetime law enforcement professional. And yes, I found that that I have a knack for telling stories, and I love to tell them, and there's a lot of great ones, right? And a lot more coming starting next week. But every once in a while, like Courtney Coco's uh, story came out, and it just took on, and it took a life of its own, right? And justice for Courtney, we go back to court next week, and they filed a bunch of motions to be like nine different motions the defense did, like, their free shot to try to get Courtney Coco's thing thrown out. But y'all, when I quit working the story, I don't just work the story. I don't just tell the story. I live the story. I live it with Miss Stephanie and her family, Courtney Coco's. And and I don't make a dime off of it. They don't pay me anything. You know, I do it when I, when I decide I'm going to take it on. I do it Woody Overton fashion, which is balls to the wall as hard as I can, and I throw my whole heart and soul into it. And I promise Courtney Coco's family and her mama that I'd be there for everything, and I have, every except for one court date that got dismissed anyway. I've been there sitting on the front row of the courtroom with them, and I'll continue to do so. And we talked, Miss Stephanie and I talked last night. They are now my family. and But it takes a lot out of me 
emotionally, mentally, and, and because of my OCD and I just get so involved in it, right? And I care so much, I want, I want to see the justice. Then fast forward to Miss Barbara Blunts. And then that's not to mention the Rapids Burning series I did where I highlighted all these different cases that have been going on in Rapids. And I wish I could work each one of them. I wish I could give each one of them the time and dedication that I gave Courtney Cocos, but I can't. You know, I just can't do it for a multitude of reasons. But then Sheriff Jason Ard reached out to me to work Miss Barbara Blunt's case. And Lord, it's a tough case. And and I, I think about her every day. I carry a picture with me every single day. So it's not like you just hear these episodes and what he's done, you know, and, and Miss Barbara's family, God bless them. Miss Miss Sarah and them, I mean, they they reach out to me all the time. And on Miss Barbara's case, it's been horrible. It's been an absolute shit show that every time we get started on something, something happened. You know, first being COVID and then whatever else and hurricanes and then COVID again and whatever. But we're still working it. And I, I still work it every day. And so could please continue to send in your tips on that case because it's important. Even if you think it's a silly idea or it's been gone over before or whatever, send it in. It may be the one thing that we need to take this to a conviction, okay? Uh, arrest, must, much less than arrest, to a conviction. But I carry Miss Barbara's case with me every single day, and it's hard and on, on me mentally and emotionally. I, I mean, I'm not, Nowhere near as hard as the family, right? But every day that I don't have an arrest in Miss Barbara's case bothers the shit out of me. And it will continue to do so. And I'm going to continue to work it, right? But I, I promised my wife, I said, I'm not doing any more. I'm not taking any more of these cases. Now, here's the problem with that. I, by that, I mean unsolved uh, cold cases, y'all. The, the problem with that is because of the success in Courtney Coco's case, and because of the Rapids Burning series, because of Miss Barbara Blunt's case, and these families having the light shown upon their pain, you know, the the I get requests. I shit you not. I bet you I get anywhere between five to ten requests a day from family members around the world that are hurting, that have horrible cases where their family members have been murdered and they're looking to get justice. And, you know, that's tough. And and I have to tell them no. And it's, it, um, it, I help them if I can. I'll tell them some of my, I'll, I'll just read it real quick and, and give them a, a, a quick opinion. But, you know, you know some of them are, are families that can't accept their, their family member committed suicide or whatever. But whatever it is, I tell them the truth. But some of them, I tell them how to get their – file for public information requests or whatever. If I can help them, I can. But y'all, there's a lot that I can't do anything for. And it just takes too much time. And, and, and I know that's being selfish, but then I have real life, real crime was, was based off the premise of me telling my old cop stories. And for me to get involved in these cases, I get a thousand percent involved. I go in wholeheartedly and I want to get justice. And I just, I told my wife, I said, I can't do it anymore. You know, I, I said, I'm, I'm going to help people where I can, but I'm not taking on another case. It's too much. Can't do it. Fast forward. I started getting contacted about, from lifers, about Mary's case. And you know, I mean, y'all, it was a bunch of you. It was a bunch of you. And, and some of you that I know personally, some of you that, that, that I just know from being lifers, and it just kept coming. Will you, will you contact this family? Will you contact this family? Blah, blah, blah. This is a horrible case. Will you contact this family? And I, I wasn't going to do it. By God, I fought it every step of the way until Mama Karen, Karen Ortolano, who is a Dream Team moderator, and she and I worked together at the sheriff's office for many, many, many years. I mean, I affectionately call her mama. I mean, I love her to death. And when she reached out to me personally and she said, Woody, baby, will you please, please call this family? I'm asking you, even if you can't help them. And, and, 
I know you don't have the time and everything else, but would you please just listen to the story? And I told her, yes, okay, because she's my mama and I love her, right? It's not my real mom, y'all, but, but you, you get the gist. Real lies, real crime. Hey, y'all, there's one part of your body that gets criminally overlooked. It's your gut. It impacts literally everything, your weight, your mood, your digestion, and because your gut houses up to 80% of your immune system, a healthy gut is truly the gateway to feeling your best. Unfortunately, there's a long lineup of crooks conspiring to take your gut health down. Stress, toxins, even just one day of eating a Western-style diet. Thankfully, with Just Thrive Probiotic, it's now easier than ever to give your gut what it needs to thrive. Just Thrive's breakthrough, award-winning, Probiotic is the only product on the market that's proven to turn your gut into an antioxidant factory, meaning you get maximum immune, digestive, and total body health support. It's vegan-friendly, gluten-free, dairy-free, histamine-free, and non-GMO, and has been loudly endorsed by some of the biggest health luminaries on the planet. So if you're looking for the best in gut health support, Choose the clinically proven, award-winning power of Just Thrive Probiotic. Y'all, I've been taking it now for about three weeks, and I feel better, cleaner, and healthier. So for a limited time, get 15% off when you go to JustThriveHealth.com and use code RLRC at checkout. That's JustThriveHealth.com. Dot com and use code RLRC at checkout. Real lies, real crime. So I reached out to Lori Cash, one of Mary's sisters, who was kind of the point of contact that I had been given. And Lori is very intelligent, and but she's she's stern, she's tough, right? And I'm, you know, I'm going into this phone call thinking that I'm going to maybe just listen and then placate them and tell them I can't do it. But she started telling me everything, y'all. And then the old cop in me comes out. And I told her, I said, look, I'm going to interrupt you and ask a lot of questions because I have hundreds of thousands of hours of interview and interrogation. And if I don't ask the question when it's on the tip of my tongue, then I'll forget, right? Once I heard just a little bit, I'm like, I'm kicking in the to cop mode. And so I started asking questions, and she's answering. She had an answer to everything, a legitimate answer. And if she didn't know something, she told me she didn't know, which I had to respect. But during the conversation, it comes out that there is a photograph of Mary in the funeral home that shows her face and, and numerous injuries. And I said, can, can you send that to me? She said, sure, right? But she keeps on, she told me how, you know, when they first met with the detectives, the detectives promised the family, no one hurt your sister. No one touched your sister. There's not a mark on her, all right? And so we're still talking, and she sends me this photograph. And I open it up, and I look at it, and I'm like, holy shit. Okay, I've dealt with, I can't tell you how many dead bodies. And here I am looking at this photograph of this deceased Mary's, deceased head, if you will. And I'm looking at all the bruising and the injuries. And if you go back and listen to the series, I described the picture at one point. And I'm looking at it and, and, and I'm kind of overcome with emotion. And I told Lori, I said, you know what? I need to get off the phone. Can I call you back? And she said, yes. I get off the phone, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, and I'm, and I'm all pissed off now. They, you know, the family was promised that this lady was never touched. Well, it's a fucking lie, okay? And, and she was touched a lot, and it wasn't in a good way. And the, to compound the fact that it took three months for them to get the autopsy report back that said she was strangled to death. And, you know, they didn't take any DNA from underneath her fingernails. They, when they brought in the main suspect and questioned him, they didn't take, or they, 
they didn't even ask to take pictures of, of, of his body when he said he had scratches on the back, something like that. But the detective didn't even ask. And, and on the phone call, on the recording on the phone call, when Lori asked about that, did, did you ask? And he's like, oh, no, no, that would have required a, a search warrant uh, for me to ask that bullshit. Every homicide I've worked where there's cases where the um, there were maybe or scratches or, or evidence that's on the body like that that I could see, you don't have to have a fucking search warrant to ask them. You know, when you get them in there, say, hey, do you, you have any injuries on you other than the scratch on your face or, or on your neck, whatever you had? And and if they say no, you say, hey, would you mind taking your shirt off and letting me look? The worst they could do is say no. But nine times out of ten, they're, they're going to comply. And when you find the scratches and shit on them, then, and you ask them what it is, of course you can advise them of the rights ahead of time, right? So you don't have to do this. And if I find something, I'll use it against you, right? But most people want to comply, even if they're guilty. They didn't do it. They didn't take the time to ask him. And again, that's more valuable evidence that's lost that could have proven that Mary put up a fight. But he's lying. He's lying to the family member who doesn't know any better. Right, if a detective sounds all authoritative and says, "Oh no, that would have taken a uh, a search warrant for a full body cavity search," bullshit, motherfucker. You know, all you had to do is ask. Then if they say no, and you've telling the family you knew since since the beginning it was a homicide, then you go get a search warrant. Then you go to the judge and let the judge decide if there's enough probable cause for you to get this photographs of this guy's body or any potential injuries or evidence off his body. They didn't do it amongst a thousand other things that I was so pissed off about. But my wife sees me sitting there and, and I, so I start telling her, she sat down, I, I told her what Lori had told me. And then I showed her the picture. Now my wife is like most people. She's not used to seeing that kind of stuff, right? I'm kind of desensitized to it, although I'm pissed off that they lied because obviously she's been beaten. And my wife says, there, she almost starts crying. And she said, baby, how can you not help this family? She said, how can you not do this? This is what you do. This is what you did your whole career. And on top of that, you got the lifers. You got the best fans in the world. If you take this case on and you work it like Woody Overton can work it, and you put it together, and you got the lifers backing you up. You, you know that's that's the only way this case is ever going to get solved. And yet, and she was right because the detectives told the family there is no way this case would ever an arrest would ever be made in this case unless Gerald Pusho or Peanut came in and actually confessed, or if the family could produce a video of him doing it. And I'm like, fuck. You know, and and I'm like, you're right. So I called Lori back. I said, Lori, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it under some conditions. I said, the first thing is I want the whole family, you and your siblings, to agree that if I take this on, once I start it, I'm not stopping, okay? I want you to understand that this is going to be a war. Yeah, This is not something... I know you're fired up and you, y'all are upset and everything, but this, when we, if we do this on real life, real crime, and we shine this spotlight on it, it's going to piss people off, including West Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office, including Peanut's got family members, right? This, these families grew up together. Peanut and the brother were best friends for, you know, how their entire lives. He was married to, Mary for 40 something years. This is, uh, they got, you know, grandkids and kids and all this shit, right? I told him, I said, you don't understand. You have no idea the fight that you're going to take on if you want to do this. So I want you to go back to each one of your siblings and explain to them that I said, it's going to be a shit show. It's going to be a fight. If we rip this scab off and we shine the light in this darkness, it's going to be, you're going to have problems that you never dreamed you could have. I said, I just, you've got to know. And they call me back if you, the family decides they want to take this battle on because it's going to be a battle. And if I do it, we're going to fuck them up. And and I didn't probably say fuck them up, y'all, to Lori. She doesn't curse, but I emphasized it real hard. So she gets off. 
and she calls her, her siblings and they talk and she called him back and she said, Hey, we want it. We want it. We want to do it. And we want to, we want this fight. It's, it's what's right for my sister. That's okay. When we set up the interview. Now, again, y'all, I'm not making any money off of this. And, and I know a lot of you listeners out there hate to hear this damn series, but you know what? Sometimes it's not about, just telling old cop stories. Sometimes it's about getting justice, and I still believe that. I still try to live my life by that. And so we we did it. I set up a date. I had to pay my producer extra to come out in the field to do it. And and y'all, as you know, on the second tape, the audio still got screwed up because that kind of stuff happens. But I developed a strategy. My strategy was to put the human face on this family's pain by starting out telling who Mary was as a person, right? So you go back and listen to episodes. I, episode one, I talk about Mary, where they grew up, what kind of person she was, what was her favorite thing to eat. They talk about everything from that to how messy she kept her car, right? But how much she loved to go to garage sales and, and, and get clothes for her grandkids or kids, whatever, I, you, Put the human face on Mary. That's what you got to do first of all. Because you know why? So many times, there's so many murders nowadays, people are just desensitized. They just, they hear it and it's like kind of in one ear and out the other. You can't do that. Put the human face on the victim. Then step two is put the human face on the victim's family's pain. Hey, ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's in your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through. Premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have hormone harmony a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone Harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. Hey, y'all. Let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble Meal Kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, ciapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something, all the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real. We've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door. So see what a difference Gobble will make for your household. Right now, they're offering my listeners a fantastic limited time deal. You get $120 off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin-baked, and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. 
That's G O B B L E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. Let the listeners hear how this family is hurting. And we did that. Step three of my plan was then to go into why they are hurting, what has been done in investigation, what hasn't been done in investigation. And I did that. Real lies, real crime. Hey, y'all. For most people, the new year means rethinking how they take care of themselves. Native makes it easy to switch to a personal care brand that makes all their products with simple ingredients. Native cares about the products you put on your body. They're all about stopping the stink the right way. That's the Native difference. Native's coconut and vanilla scented aluminum-free deodorant has been a customer favorite for years, and now Native is on a mission to overhaul your entire hygiene routine. They create products that are made with simple ingredients like shea butter and coconut oil so you can smell great all day long. Native deodorant checks a lot of boxes. Aluminum-free, 24-hour odor protection, zero residue on skin application, and over 10 cents to choose from. Now is the time to treat yourself with Native. If you visit their site, you'll find not just deodorant, but body wash, bar soap, toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, and sunscreen. Everything you need to take your self-care to the next level. Y'all, I use Native. It's totally replaced what I've been using my entire life. I like it. It gives great protection, and I would recommend it to anybody. This year, up your personal hygiene routine with Native. Go to nativedeo.com slash R-L-R-C or use promo code R-L-R-C at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's N-A-T-I-V-E-D-E-O dot com slash R-L-R-C, or use promo code R-L-R-C at checkout for 20% off your first order. Real lies, real crime. Okay, now I started releasing the episodes in the order that I want it. And I told the family, I said, when I got done recording with them, I said, I'm going to be with you every step of the way. This is now my fight, okay? I said, but I'm not going to be very active, if you will, in the beginning on these first four parts. When I get done, I'm going to do a call to action, and that's when we're going to blow it out, right? But I wanted you as lifers to hear the story, like I told you, who Mary was, how she lived her life, then the family's pain, and then the screw-ups and everything that have and haven't been done in investigation and all the questions that are unanswered, et cetera, et cetera. And, but I told them, I said, you know, they and the, when the first episode drops, they start blowing up on social media and all that, and, and rightfully so, and I wanted it. And I liked every, every post, but I did not do a call to action. It wasn't time. I let it go. Second episode, same thing. Now it's building momentum. It's growing organically. Mary's case is, right? People are getting to know about it. Third episode, same thing. I'm kind of waiting in the wings because I know the big daddy's coming, right? Fourth episode, same thing. But when I told you to stay tuned for the fifth because it was going to be the most important, I meant it. And that was where Lori Cash had the detective bouquet recorded on the phone line and she asked him and God bless her because I don't know how she didn't lose her cool and she asked him all those questions that you heard and he lied about most of it okay and then and also tells her there's absolutely I, I know he did it but I can't prove it and unless he comes in and confesses or you provide a video it's never going to happen right well we proved it wrong okay when I knew when the fifth series dropped and I did the call to action, the lifers, and I gave you the sheriff's phone number, I gave you the supervisor detective's phone number, I gave you Detective Bouquet's phone number and emails, and I knew what the response was going to be. I had told the family, I said, be prepared because when these lifers get a hold of it, 
and they, they after they hear the last episode, which is so damaging for them, I said after they hear the last episode, it's going to go crazy. You, then we're going we're going to get the media attention and everything else. I said the focus, the whole point is to shine the light on Mary's homicide where it can't be swept under the rug. And well, at this point, Bama's got nothing to lose, right? Because nothing's being done. They're telling you, you can't, we can't do anything, period. So what do we have to lose? Push out the fifth episode, y'all, and I'm actually out of town. I'm like 4,000 miles away with the, on Tuesday when that episode dropped. And I get a phone call from, and I wasn't even on social media much that day, but I knew it was going to blow up. But I get a phone call from Trey from uh, Channel 2. He's a head news director from Channel 2 in Baton Rouge, WBRZ, the ABC affiliate. And I hadn't talked to him in two years, but we were talking about right before COVID happened, we were talking about Barbara Blunt's case and some other business stuff. And then COVID happened and shut everything down, right? But I get the phone call, and I still had him programmed in my phone, so I answer it. And he said, hey, Woody, it's Trey. You remember me? And I say, yep, sir, I sure do. He said, you know, it's almost been two years to the day that since the last time we spoke and we were going to do all this stuff and, and what have you. I said, yeah. And he said, well, look, I'm calling about Mary's case, man. He said, you would not believe what's going on over here. I said, well, tell me. He said, your listeners are melting our phone lines. And he said, I've already been in contact with the West Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office, and they pretty much didn't have any comment or whatever at first. And and But he had a contact. Let's, let's just say there was a contact inside the Sheriff's Office that said their phone lines were melting from lifers around the world demanding justice for Mary. Now, that's priceless. Not only the phone lines, their emails. I had a lifer from Australia email me. And she said, they're sending my emails back. I and mean, at one point, I think we actually shut down the email system for them because y'all were overwhelming them, right? But you know what? I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't want justice for Mary. And I have this platform, right? Yeah, telling stories is great. But you got all these people who are ma- mamas or dads or brothers or sisters themselves, and they think, what if Mary was my sister or daughter or whatever, right? So the lifers got fired up, and I didn't have to do anything else. The lifers got fired up, and they blew it up. And, I mean, y'all, I couldn't be any prouder of you. I couldn't – I can't say thanks anymore. First of all, Mary's family for staying the course in the fight because it got ugly. Things have not been easy on them, I can assure you. But they stayed the course. They stayed true to their sister and did it. Secondly, the lifers out there, every single one of you who took the time to call and email and and share everything on Facebook and all social media, you just can't. I just can't or never will be able to thank you enough. And I know the family feels the same way because now I'm going to tell you what happened. All right. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is play you when I was way, 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 way far away. The WBRZ actually ran a story that night. I told I told him, I said, there's no way. He wanted me to get on a Zoom call. I'm like, bro, there's no way. I have absolutely no service. I don't have the time, et cetera. He said, when you get back to town next Tuesday, can can you come in? I said, yeah, I would. But, you know, that hadn't happened yet for obvious reasons. You'll see in a minute. But this is what happened the first time. The sheriff's office comes out, and under the pressure that y'all brought, lifers and the family brought, they swap it from no arrest can ever be made to that they plan on taking this case in March of 2021 to a grand jury. But let me play this for you if I can get it to play. I can't, I can't find the first release that WBRZ did, which basically said that because a true crime podcast, Real Life Real Crime, shined the spotlight on Mary's case, now the sheriff is saying that they 
intend to take Mary's case to a grand jury in uh, March, right? Well, that's a hell of a long ways from saying that they could never arrest him, period. So, but we'll fast forward a couple more days, and I introduced Trey to, I, I gave Trey's lawyer's phone number, and so he went to interview, or they went to interview the family. So I'll play you the excerpt from the, this first news article that night. First at 9 o'clock, a new reward in what has become a high-profile homicide investigation in West Baton Rouge Parish. A podcast turning the focus on a possible suspect and putting the heat on detectives. Fallon Brown is live in the newsroom with new details in a story we first broke last night. Sylvia Michael, Mary Pusho, was found dead in March of last year. In that time span, the family says the investigation isn't moving fast enough, despite investigators saying in a recording they know who murdered her. This isn't asking someone to fix a speeding ticket. This is a murder investigation. Treat it as such. Family members of Mary Pusho talking to WBRZ after a popular podcast put a new spotlight on the woman's homicide. The only evidence that they've kind of indicated that they've had to us, now this is what's been shared, is basically what we as a family or a few other public members have given them. The family frustrated so many months later, there's no arrest in the case. Pusho was found beaten and strangled in March of 2021. A death so gruesome, true crime podcaster Woody Overton says he couldn't ignore it. This is a murder that I could not turn my back on after I was sent the pictures of how Mary was beat to hell, basically. Her death certificate lists her death as a homicide, but the family says detectives told them there is not enough evidence to prosecute a suspect. We were shared information by the prosecutors, by the detectives, who their suspect was, and literally said, we know he did it. The family spending all their free time working on their own case. Now, so desperate for answers, they're offering a reward. I'll give $10,000 reward to anybody who can lead to the arrest and conviction for the murder of my sister. That comes out of my pocket and this, this, this sister's pocket. I will pay the $10,000. Hoping for information leading to a confession. So there's justice for Mary. West Baton Rouge Paris Sheriff's Office is handling the case and tells WBRZ the case will be brought before a grand jury, but did not want to comment on the podcast. In the newsroom, Fallon Brown, WBRZ News 2. Real life, real crime. Hey, y'all. After a long day when I get home and I want to relax, I chill out in my recliner and get lost in a gripping story with characters I can love and hate. Is that too much to ask? Nope. Thanks to Sundance Now, I always have something to watch that's binge-worthy and that I can be obsessed with. Sundance Now is an ad-free streaming service created by AMC Networks for people who obsess over riveting storytelling and fresh perspectives. Sundance Now has original prestige dramas, international thrillers, and bone-chilling true crime shows. Every show is a sleek production with sexy lead characters. Y'all, I've been watching the British series, A Discovery of Witches. It's the perfect mix of period drama, romance, and edge-of-your-seat thriller. I've already watched seasons one and two, which are streaming now. And season three, the final season, is streaming January 8th. Discovery Witches includes Matthew and Diana returning from their trip to 1590 to find tragedy at Septors. They must find the missing pages from the Book of Life and the book itself before it's too late. Their enemies are gearing up against them, and a monster from Matthew's past who has been lying in wait will return for revenge. You can stream Sundance now on all your favorite devices for as low as $4.99 a month. Just download the app or watch online and discover exclusive shows from around the world instantly. I found my next TV obsession on Sundance now, and you will too. Try Sundance now free for 30 days by going to SundanceNow.com and use promo code RLRC. That's SundanceNow.com, code RLRC, for 30 days of free streaming. SundanceNow.com, code RLRC. Real life, real 
real crime. Ha ha, shocker, right? They don't want to comment on the podcast. So kudos again for the family to putting themselves in the fire and even stepping up and offering a $10,000 reward, okay? That is a hell of a long ways from saying, "Mm, sorry, we can't do anything. Now we're going to take it to a grand jury because of what you lifers did. But we're not done yet. The case continued and the pressure continued. Y'all continue to melt them, burn them up, and it's just priceless, right? The pressure continues. Y'all continue to call. It's blown up on social media like crazy. Now I'm jumping in, right? Answering every single one of them, thanking everybody for sharing it. I mean, that's a huge victory for us to get it to the point where they even acknowledge it, first of all, publicly that it's a homicide. Number two, they're saying that they're going to work it and take it to a grand jury in March. Well, that's good, right? I was contacted, and I'm not going to say who, I was contacted by someone after the podcast was released that said when the detective bouquet said that he did X, Y, and Z in the investigation and went to such, such location and looked at such and such, this person contacted me and said that is an absolute lie. He never talked to us. He never came here. I mean, y- y'all, it's a bald-faced lie. And I'm gonna, but I don't know if this person is telling me the truth. So I, and I said, can you maybe call him up and confront him and, re- and record it? Uh, and I explained that under Louisiana law, as long as one person that's a part of the conversation gives permission, it's legal, right? They did it. And by God, they tore into his ass, and, and he admitted. He lied. He admitted he had never been there. He had never did the things that he said to Lori Cash on the podcast, on the recording. Now, now you it's malfeasance in office at the very best case scenario. The worst case scenario is he's covering up for Gerald Pucho or Peanut, who used to be a warden for the West Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office. But, what I mean, what are you supposed to believe, right? I mean, why would you lie about all this serious, serious stuff? And, and you know, okay, so you, what am I doing with that? Nothing yet. I'm uh, holding on to the card to see what the powers of be are going to do. But meanwhile, oh, my gosh, lifers. Y'all tore it up on every social media channel in the Real Life Real Crime community app everywhere. And I answered everyone and told them thank you. And now people were really pissed off. And people, much, much more people went and listened to the episode, at least to episode five in the series. And they became more pissed. And they kept calling. They kept grinding. They kept emailing until the point where the powers that be brought the family back in and told them, I'm not going to go into the discussions, but basically told them that they were going to be on it. And they questioned about everything that that was said on the podcast. And it was important to me, y'all when they, when they told, when I was told about this, then I knew they, this wasn't getting swept under the rug. I knew that West Baton Rouge Sheriff's office and the prosecution were stepping up and it's a shame that it had to come after y'all did it, after y'all blew it up, but it came. So I'm going to play this next one for you. This is what happens. So the other morning, I'm I'm back home, y'all, and it's 8 o'clock in the morning, and I didn't go to bed till like 4 o'clock, but this 8 o'clock in the morning, and Cindy wakes me up. She's shaking me. She shakes. She said, baby, baby. I said, what? She said, they arrested him. I said, who? She said, Peanut, Gerald Pouchet, they arrested him for murdering Mary and for obstruction of justice. She had been on social media already. I'm like, holy shit. So I immediately call the family and then, you know, everything else, right? So let me just play this story for you. Now, listen, this was on so many different news channels. I'm going to play, I, I want to play you two. I'm going to play you WBRZ's first. No, no. Yeah, I'll play you WBRZ's first, and then I'll play you another one that I did an interview for, okay? You know what? Time constraints, I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to play the the next one, which is from Fox News in Baton Rouge, and they also uh, NBC affiliate channel 33, BatonRougeProud.com. So I want to play this for y'all. This is important, and each and every one of y'all made this happen. It would not have happened if y'all not answered the call. 
Early this morning, a West Baton Rouge man was arrested for the murder of his wife. Gerald Pucho is charged with second degree murder and obstruction of justice nearly one year after his wife of 42 years, Mary Pucho, was found dead in their home. Yeah, that's right. Details of this case grabbed the community's attention after the podcast Real Life, Real Crime dove into what the family felt was a slow moving investigation. Our investigative reporter, Ariel Salt, checks in with the host of the podcast now that an arrest has been made. In March, Mary Pusho was found dead in her home. Her siblings grew frustrated with the West Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office for not solving her case. So they turned to Woody Overton, the host of the podcast, Real Life, Real Crime. The detective told the family there is no way they were, they were able, ever be able to make an arrest unless he came in and confessed. But I knew that wasn't true. Mary's family suspected her husband, Gerald Pouchot, murdered her from the very beginning, telling Overton in an interview that Gerald had a history of domestic violence and his behavior was odd after her passing. It was a lot of things and he was the last one with her. His stories never matched up uh, and you know, he secretly got married within six months while he's still telling the family that I mean, he's doing this grieving and everything else. Before becoming the host of his own podcast, Overton was a Livingston Parish detective and was with the Louisiana State Police. He says this case should have been solved months ago. They had way more than enough probable cause, but they screwed up the investigation from the beginning. Gerald was arrested early Thursday morning and charged with second degree murder. Overton applauds WBRSO for booking him. Kudos to him for stepping up now. It's sad it has to come after the pressure, but they did the right thing. Pouchot was booked in the West Breton Rouge Detention Center where he reportedly worked as a warden years ago. No bond has been set at this time. We reached out to WBRSO for comment, but they have not responded. Ariel Salk, NBC Local 33 News. And his wife left behind four children, sisters, and a brother, and a lot of grandchildren. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. In common, like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses, and many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., they have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash RLRC. That's uncommongoods.com slash RLRC for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. So y'all, there you have it. Gerald Husho or Peanut is sitting in the West Baton Rouge jail where he used to be the warden under arrest for the murder of Mary and obstruction of justice. To the family, Mary's family, we love you. We're going to continue to stand by you. And this is just the first step in the process, right? But if you, you had not fought, if you, had you not sought me out 
and continue to seek justice for your sister, this would not happen. And I told you my plan. We executed it perfectly. And thank God, West Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office made the rest. Now, I want to give props to them. They're 99% of all cops are great, y'all, you know, and they want to do their job. For whatever reason, Mary's case got stuffed, shuffled, whatever, I mean, whatever you want to call it. But lifers, I can say it's because of you, because Mary's family had been trying, right, and they couldn't get the results. They had had the meetings. They have done all everything they could do, and they couldn't get the results. When I did the call to action, lifers, you answered it. So when I do the post and I say this, the true credit belongs to Mary's family and every lifer, I mean it. You did it. You kept the pressure up. You shared it everywhere in the world. You've called. You've emailed. You've done it. And he is under arrest. Not because, just because of your pressure, but because the evidence was there all along and he should have been arrested a long time ago. The case is now being worked, and it's going to be prosecuted. And I want to say personally thank you to Sheriff Mike Cass and whoever it is now that he has working the case for, I want to say, I'm sorry that, that we we had to bring the heat, and, and, and maybe, maybe y'all weren't aware. I don't know. I know you're good people, but this was handled totally the wrong way. This family should have not had to go on this long. But you stepped up, you did your job, and you did it correctly. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to those that are the powers that be that made this case move forward finally and got the rest. And we got the first step for justice for Mary with the rest of her husband of 40 something years. So I love all of y'all. I'm blown away once again by the response that y'all given me. And when I, when I called for it, you know, I always said, and um, when we won the, the awards in the past and, and all these different things, you know, I said, I don't, I didn't have a big production company. That was before I signed with cloud 10 and our heart radio of the day before Hurricane Ida destroyed my home. But before that, I, I said I'll put the lifers up against anybody in the world, and I meant it. And we did it again, y'all. I asked, y'all delivered, and you ought to feel damn proud of yourselves because I'm damn proud of you. Every single one of you, and I got goosebumps. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And to all of you other families that are out there hurting and you're sending me your case information and stuff like that, maybe I got to rethink. Maybe I need to rethink. I, I actually, I'm going to rethink what I'm going to do going forward in the future. Now, I'm always going to tell my cop stories, but so many of y'all said that you know, God put me here and gave me this gift and et cetera, my, and my wife included, and I have this platform Real lies, real crime. Hey, y'all, let me tell you about Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. My favorite thus far is the Boom Boom Shrimp Bowls. It comes with green leaf lettuce, stir-fried cabbage, and red bell pepper, and prepares in 25 minutes. It's gluten-free, keto, and paleo. Enjoy your greens while being green. Green Chef is the most sustainable meal kit, offsetting 100% of their plastic packaging in every box and 100% of their carbon footprint and emissions. With fresh produce, premium proteins, and organic ingredients, you can trust Green Chef as the number one meal kit for eating well. Green Chef offers 35 nutritious and flavorful options to choose from every week.
featuring premium clean ingredients that are seasonally sourced for peak freshness. Green Chef's always changing variety of easy to follow recipes means there's something new to discover each week so you'll never get bored. Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh, and with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I love switching between the brands, and now my listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. Go to greenchef.com slash RLRC130 and use code RLRC130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Go to greenchef.com slash RLRC130 and use code RLRC130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. Real life, real crime. Courtney Coco's murder is in jail. Mary Pershaw's murder is in jail. Both of them are waiting trial. Fighting like hell for Miss Barbara Blunt. We'll see what we can do for everybody else. But thank you so much. And I'm going to conclude this series. Now, it, as the trial goes along and stuff develops in Mary's case, I certainly will cover it so y'all will know about it. But I appreciate y'all. And next week, I'll be back to telling old cop stories, okay? Damn proud of you people. Real quick, I want to talk about the crew bash. It's huge, y'all. It's two weeks away from today. And the VIP event is Friday night at the Basin. We have the whole club on 3rd Street. We have the whole club from 7 o'clock until 2 o'clock or whenever they kick us out. And that is sold out as far as the VIP tickets go. They get you early the next night into the Texas club for my live show in Chase Tyler Band. But Friday night, we opened it up because that place is so big. We opened it up for another, I think, 100 uh, people to buy tickets. And a lot of people couldn't said they couldn't come Saturday night to my show because of weddings or whatever. Uh, uh, some of them had a Mardi Gras ball, but they wanted to come Friday night. So there there are tickets for sale for Friday night. It's 20 bucks to get in, and you can party all night long, and I'm going to sign autographs and take pictures and actually get to spend time with everybody there versus the live shows when I only had like three or four hours and and I got a line down the stairs and uh, around the building of people wanting to, to get an autograph and take pictures, right? But this night, Friday night, we're doing it. I'm going to be accessible to everyone. I will spend time with each and every one of you. And when I get done signing autographs and pictures, we're going to throw it down. But we're going to have a DJ uh, because – we're having the world-famous Chase Tyler Band play after me at the Texas Club the next night. So I figured a DJ would be good at the base, and it's a concert hall, y'all. It's a very nice place. It's where I did my first big live show, and we sold it out. So Friday night, if you want to come to that, it's 20 bucks. Tickets are eventbrite.com. Then Saturday night, the doors open at 7 at the Texas Club, if the VIP members, you know what you're getting. You're getting in 30 minutes early. But, y'all, there's not a bad place in the house. It's a concert hall. is you know, the largest country music place in South Louisiana. Everybody from George Jones to Garth Brooks to George Strait, everybody that's ever been anything famous in country music played at the Texas Club, right? I got to do the last – Crew bash, the second crew bash there, amazing. I finally got the video in the other night after a long, long, unnecessary wait. But I got the video in. It was amazing, y'all. The crowd was amazing. The venue is amazing. That place is built to watch the concert, okay? So it's not a bad seat in the house. We're going to be there. I'm going to take the stage. I'm going to do a live, never-before-heard Real Life, Real Crime, Old Cop Story podcast, but I'm also going to make it crowd interactive. It's going to be a little bit different. I'm, I am always interact with the crowd. You know, if y'all been there, boom, and stuff like that, right? But I'm going to do that part, but I'm going to make this one, take it even a step further. And people in the crowd, you're going to know what, about it. <laughs> I don't want to give it away. So those tickets, we still have some general admission left. They are 40 bucks, $40, eventbrite.com. They are going to sell out, people. Absolutely going to sell out. 
it, I will do my live show and then I will go upstairs and, and sign autographs and take pictures as, as long as Chase Tyler band is playing the Louisiana two time Louisiana country music hall of fame inductee. And y'all, if you were there last year, you know, this band and Chase Tyler rocks the house. They give me goosebumps. It, it is a concert. It's not like a, something rinky dink, right? I mean, they're going to play Mardi Gras balls in Washington, D.C. next week. They're the shit. So anyway, while they're playing, I'll, I'll do the autographs, et cetera. But when they stop or they get ready to stop, I'm going to go downstairs and sing the last song of the night on stage with Chase Tyler, and then we're done, right? But it's going to sell out. Go to eventbrite.com, get your tickets. I'm telling you, it's happened every time. The People wait till the last minute and and – when that rush and crush comes and like, oh man, it, but there's none left. And I'm like, I can't do anything about it. There's a fire marshal code of how many people they can let in on, in, in these venues. So get your tickets, eventbrite.com, 40 bucks. You want to come Friday night to the basin, it's 20 bucks. And then y'all, we had the Hilton. I've been telling y'all about it for months and months, the Capital Center Hilton, which the, now the rate for, Per night is over three hundred and something dollars a night, but we had it locked in at one hundred and twenty one dollars a night for lifers with the, the use code RLRC one. If you booked your room already and you didn't use that code, you can you can still go back and swap your room to that code, and it's going to save you a lot of money, a lot of money. And and but the deal is, we're sold out. We sold out the whole damn Capital Center Hilton. So maybe somebody cancels. If you want to come in and stay there now, we're going to be, I'm going to be there Thursday night through Sunday. But if you want to come hang out with us, you want to stay at the nicest hotel in Baton Rouge, you want to be a block away from the basin, the, the VIP party Friday night, that's where we stay. All right. All right? And I'll be there Thursday night. And if, if y'all were there last year, you know, I, hang, I hung out with, in, in the bar and the lobby, which y'all probably way longer than I should have. <laughs> but, but, uh, but it was lifers, and we were all family, and it was love. But it, I, I just like the tickets. I'm telling you, the tickets for the club are going to sell out. Tickets for the show are going to sell out. We have officially sold out the Capital Center Hilton, which is on the Mississippi River, y'all, in downtown Baton Rouge. So, But you can still try, but call them direct and see if you can get a room because you're not going to get one online, and the RRC code is not going to be good. Sorry. Just I'm I'm not lying to you about the tickets either. They're going to sell out. So go to eventbrite.com and get your tickets for one night or both nights. And we can't wait to see you there. Now, very important, last thing. You know I always ended up with LOPA, Louisiana Organ Procurement Agency. Last year we raised $8,000 selling raffle tickets for Captain Calvin Duvall's Got It charter fishing trip and a Yeti ice chest donated by local leaders podcast, Jim Chapman and another Yeti donated by Miss Tiffy Sicard of home key mortgage this year. Y'all we have over $20,000 worth of prizes and the ticket prices are the same It's $15 for one chance or 10 chances for a hundred bucks. Now, Originally, we thought the prize amount was only going to be $16,000. Now it's over $20,000. And I'm going to do some more episodes in the next two weeks. And everybody that donated is going to, you're going to get to hear them talk about why they donated. I've already done one with Shane McBride with Mclaw Whitetail Adventures, who donated a four day guided whitetail hunt and a four day guided turkey hunt. And I'll be there for whenever the winter goes for both of them. And I'm going to cook for you. And, and so, that's an RRC expense that we're donating to, but we should probably should add that into the amount. But everybody else, the and I'll touch on them real quick, y'all. Like local leaders, Jim Chapman has donated a full podcast to any any business that wants to come on. I mean, they he promotes the heck out of them, and his su- su- show is a smashing success. And, and um, I mean, he's doing phenomenal, right? So he donated that. They he donated. Another uh, another Yeti. It, it's just a bunch of stuff, okay? So thank you to the Local Leaders Podcast, Jim Chapman. T- Tiffany Sicard, Home Key Mortgage, again, donated another Yeti ice chest. And these are like six $700 ice chests, y'all. So it, and we'll have her on the show. Thank you, Tiffany and Home Key Mortgage. 
my good buddy, Captain Calvin Duvall. Y'all, I've been on this fishing trip, and he took me and my sons out, and we had a, the best time ever. My youngest son, before he was getting off the boat, saying, Daddy, when can we go back? It, that's Duvall's Cajun Charters, okay? They donated another guided trip. And on top of that, he donated a custom-built rod, and he's he's mounted with one of the same reels he uses on his charter boat and spooling it, et cetera. But that's going to be sold separate. That's going to be auctioned off for $1 tickets on the rod is on for Friday night, right? But so, but I just want you to know what he's donated. But that, that guided trip, it's a lot of money, people. And and you get to go to Delacroix, Louisiana, one of the most beautiful spots in the world, and go fishing. And, and, and matter of fact, some lifers that went down with him last year to fish are coming in the day early for the crew bash this year, and they're going back with him. That's how much fun they had. So thank thank you, Duvall's Cajun Charters, and, and, and Captain Duvall and, and, uh, and your wife, Kim. Oh, Lord, there's so many, y'all. Brian with Grain Works. Brian, I finally got my sign finally finished and mounted. Brian built my big Real Life Real Crime sign for my headquarters building where the studio is over my bar. And with LED lights, et cetera, I'm about to post that on social media when I get Brian on the show. But Brian is donating, and, and go look under Grainworks, G-R-A-I-N-W-E-R-X, I believe, on Instagram. He actually has a video of the the custom cutting board or chartreuse board that he's making for to donate for this. It's handmade. He's showing you. He's doing it by hand, and it's, it has the pistol grip on it. Uh, I'm not just go look it up. It's a, it's unbelievably beautiful. That's another prize. Miss, um, uh, Miss Peyton, who has Adele Lane spa has donated a $500 gift certificate to her spa. Guess what? That's where my wife and daughters go. She is the bomb. And, and she is such a uplifter of women. It's ridiculous. Go listen to her on local leaders podcast. Her show, I think has, has been Jim Chapman's, and should have been Jim Chapman's number one downloaded show. So she's donated five hundred dollars to go get yourself pampered. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Adele Lane Spa, Crystal Falgu, manager of Just for Him in Denham Springs. Just for Him has donated another Magellan ice chest, which is super fine. I, I was there; she did my hair just about ten days ago, and she got it in. She's donating that. Uh, just for him's donating that ice chest, which I would love to win, and and a twenty ounce Yeti tumbler, and a sixty dollar gift certificate to go in there and have the best haircut in the world. I mean, I get the full shave and the hair wash and the scalp massage. I mean, good lord, I I love to <laughs> I love to go to just for him. And if you don't get Crystal, all those girls in there are fantastic. Then we have. The lady from that is donating the handmade quilt. I mean, it just, it, I'm gonna have her on too. And then the boutique in Livingston is donating two different gift certificates one's for a gift basket, and the other one is for in store purchases. And I'm gonna have her on. It's just too many to list, y'all, but it's we're raising the money. We wanna beat our $8,000 that we raised last year. We've upped the prizes by about, hmm. $18,000. I mean, there's over $20,000 worth of prizes. Please go online, any of our social media. You can go to lopa.org. They have it posted there. You can go to Jim Chapman, Local Leaders Podcast. He has it posted on his. Captain Calvin Duvall, they have it posted on theirs. I know if you go into Just For Him, they have it on there. And we made it easy. Cindy made it easy for y'all this year. All you have to do is, is scan the code and enter your information. It's done electronically. You get your tickets electronically. It's easy peasy. If you don't like that, or you want to do it the old school way, email Cindy, C-Y-N-D-I, at realliferealcrime.com, and she will absolutely get you taken care of and get you entered into the drawing. And the Beauty Barn in Denver Springs, I know, is doing uh, another location Jim Chapman has it set up at. So, y'all, it's it's. Lopa is a nonprofit organization that saves lives every single day. Take a minute if you're a lifer from Guadalajara, Mexico. You don't have to be from Louisiana. Take a minute, go to lopa.org, sign up to be an organ donor, and give the gift of life.
and sight and everything else that they do. Be a hero. They, they're saving lives every day. That's why it's my passion. That's why we're trying to raise money for them so they can continue to do what they do. And I said it once, but I'll tell you again, one of the, Captain Calvin Duvall's mama was a recipient of a double lung transplant from Lopa. And he got to have her on this earth for five more years because of that lung transplant. So that's that's what we're trying to raise money for y'all. So go get your tickets. And I'm Woody Overton, your host of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. Until next time or ever, don't let me catch you down on Murder Bayou. Peace. Get ready, you're gonna do Real Life Real Crime is a true crime podcast brought to you by Woody Overton and executive producer Toby Tomplay in conjunction with iHeartRadio and Cloud 10 Media. Se adelantó el Black Friday en JCPenney. Y para comenzar con el pie derecho, tenemos botas para damas a $19.99 el par. O encuentra toallas de baño Home Expressions a solo $2.99 cada una. Aprovecha y consiente a toda la familia con ropa de invierno desde $17.99. Encuentra miles de ofertas a precios de Black Friday todo el fin de semana. JCPenney. Vale la pena. Ofertas válidas del 8 al 10 de noviembre en selección de estilos. Las ofertas se excluyen de los cupones. Detalles en la tienda jcp.com.